Welcome to ITDesk.tv. Now for those doing computer programming, there is an online compiler, um, onlinegdb.com, that you could go to to practice the various syntax from the different programming languages. We got a question coming in from a subscriber that um, wanted to know about for loops. And so we said we're going to deal with those today. And we're going to use this online gdb.com to show you how it works. And for this demonstration, we're going to be using the C language. That's one of the foundation languages, right? C. Um, so as you notice here, it, it has the library or the header file in hashtag include stdio, which is the standard input output dot h which is the input output header library which allows us to do basic functions so let's talk about the for loop now and what that is now a loop as you you know as you understand it a loop we're trying to get something to happen over and over for a set amount of time but there must be something or some way for the loop to close so the for loop is just one of those types of loops and it has as the first parameter or the first expression in that for loop will initialize what should happen at the beginning so it's an initialization of the loop the second expression as you'll see shortly it's the conditions for the loop to continue and then the third expression is anything that needs to happen to support the loop continuing or not continuing it happens after the block of code that will be put into the loop. So it looks like this. So I want to display on the screen um, the basic hello world and I want it to show five times. I want you to see hello world five different times and I want you to see it each time going down, okay? So here is the for loop. I'll simply come in here and say for I'll initialize an expression. I'll create an integer int count. That's the variable followed by an, an count equals zero. I'll just make it be, be zero. You use the semicolon to say that that's the first um, expression. Here's the second one. Count must be less than five. And here is the third expression that I want to run at the end of the block each time. I want something to happen. Because if it keeps running with count being zero all the time, it's never going to end. We're going to be stuck in an endless loop because count is always zero. The expression to keep it going, it meets it every time. So we'll never stop. What do we do? Count plus plus. That's basically count plus one each time so each time it loops count is incremented by one so now it becomes one then it becomes two and it keeps going at some point it's going to not be less than five and the loop will end that's the way how the loops work so this is what we do there's a function called print f i believe yeah i'm a little bit rusty hello world So if I run this, I see a whole bunch of hello world, one, two, three, four, five. So it did run, but it's not displayed in a format that's easily readable. And I want it to look a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put what we call a new line character, which is a slash N. So each time it runs like it just did, it's gonna put a new line awaiting the other thing. So the first time it ran, New line it goes to a different line, it runs again, runs through different line. So let's see this one first. Okay, <clears throat> and here it is. So I have the hello world showing up now in different lines. Good. I'd like to see what the count is though, each time it ran. So what I'm going to do at each um, 
each loop, I'd like to see beside hello world, I'd like to see what the value of the count is so we can see exactly what's going on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put a dash. I'm going to create what we call a, a placeholder. It's like a display placeholder because I'm going to, I want, this is a string here. And as and in programming, you can put a number inside a string like that. It's not going to work, especially in the C language. So what I got, what I have to do right here before it hits the new line, I'm going to put, I believe it's a percentage D, and then at the end, I'm going to put the variable that I want to replace this display variable here. So I want this to be replaced by what we a little bit rusty, but it's coming back. So we have hello world, I put a holder here, percentage D, and I put count. So count is going to be substituted into here and displayed like you saw. So the first time it ran, count was zero. It then went to one, then it went to two the second time, then it went to three and four. So it was less than five. That's how we do the for loop in the C language. Next step, we're going to look at the while loop to show what is the difference and how it can be applied. Stay tuned. So the while loop, it's while, while, but before I do that, Let's create a variable. Int b equals zero. So I just created an integer variable to be, and this is what I'm going to use this in the while loop. That's why I did that. So now I have a while <clears throat> b is less than five. While it's less than five. I want to do just like I did before, print F. Hello world. I'm gonna put the percentage D again. Um I'm gonna put a new line. <clears throat> put a comma, I'm gonna put B. Um after when this is finished i'm gonna i'm gonna in order for it not to be stuck in there because b is now equal to zero and i haven't said <clears throat> what that b should change or anything so it never change we're gonna have print f all the way and it's not stopping it's just gonna it's just gonna keep going so i had a syntax error here i'm sorry yeah all right so i had to put the semicolon so you notice it's always zero and you look down there it keeps running I want to show you so you see it. All right, good. Now the only way for this to 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 be something else, I have to say, for example, B plus plus means every time you finish here, go increase B by one. I could write it like this, or I could write B plus equal one. I could do that too. That's the same thing as a B plus plus, which is a plus one each time. This is telling it add one each time, just the same. All right. But for now, let's leave it at B++. And there's the result. Just the same results that I got when I did the for loop. I can get the same results here using a different loop and a different strategy. So as you can see, all right, I declared an integer here. And B made it equal to 0. While B is less than 5, Keep printing this hello world and the value of B. The thing is, at the end of the block, I said increase B, increment it by one. So I kept adding one to it. So at some point, B now is not going to be less than one. So the first time it ran, it was zero. The second time it ran, it was one, two. By the time it got to four, it couldn't run again because now it wouldn't be less than five. So the loop closed. And that is the while loop. Okay? 
Now let's look at what, um, and I'm just gonna make a few changes to show you what we call the do while loop, okay? While this. It's almost, this. it's pretty much the same thing. It's where you need to use this one and this one just, it's a little bit easier to deal with. So you might just use a do while here. Or you might just use a while you notice I didn't change much it's really do what's in the block while this is happening here not a problem so loops are pretty I wouldn't say they're simple I would simply say I would just say to you go to an, a platform like this online GDB and practice as with everything, perfect practice makes perfect. <laughs> and if you have any questions or you need some assistance with the programming, because you see, we could use whatever language we want. Program is, programming is about concepts. Languages are simply syntax. We could flip through languages all day long. As long as you understand the concepts, you'll be just fine itdesk.tv unlocking doors wait and and remember please let your fellow students or anyone who would need assistance with this let them know they can get assistance here don't be selfish let them know <laughs>